Hey, I'm Danny McCallum. I play Tuklo in Marvel's Echo, and you're watching Pop Culture with Pat. Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So I'm so excited to be joined by today's guests. Today we're going to be talking all things Marvel's Echo with Danny McCallum, plays Tuklo in the series. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Danny. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> You're very welcome. I'm I'm so excited to to talk to you about this show. And but before we kind of you know dive into all things Echo, I wanted to just ask you to you know as I do a lot of first time guests on the show, just what how did you kind of get started in acting? What was like your inspiration you know for getting into the field in the first place? Um, when I was little um, in my hometown, we it's, it's my hometown is very focused on sports. Um, but when I was little, there was this traveling theater that would come through during the summers and they'd only be in your town for a week. So you'd have uh, two days of auditions, like three days of rehearsal and then um, and then like two performances. And then they would just move on to the next city. And uh, my older sister, my parents put my older sister in it and I saw her doing it. And I was like, well, I want to do that, too. So then I auditioned and, and got in. I was a, a mouse in the Pied Piper. I was one of like 20 kids they had just running around in a mouse costume on stage. Um, but yeah, I started in theater. This is That was where my heart was for, gosh, my whole life. And, and now you're here on, you know, one of the, the, the biggest <laughs> shows on, on Disney+. Plus. Now, you know, you've been doing this for a little bit now. What advice would you give? Because, I mean, it's it's definitely it's a, a challenging uh, field to, to to get into and, you know, continuing to pursue. So what advice would you give to any, you know, actors that are maybe in the field like right now that are, you know, working their way up or just people that are maybe looking to get into the field initially? Yeah, I think honestly, it's, it's a lot of no's and you have to be prepared for that. I think um, facing rejection multiple times, sometimes multiple times in a day is, is a really tough thing to deal with. But I think you have to go into it with the mindset of it's, it's never personal. It's it's always a business. This is truly a business. And you can't stop after one, two, a hundred no's. If this is something you really love to do, you, you're super passionate about it. Um, don't, don't lose that passion just because you're not the right fit for one project out there. There are so many things going on in this industry, so many studios, um, so many streaming sites that are now, you know, everything's original content. And and also, if, you you know, acting isn't where you want to go in this industry and it maybe writing or or directing, um, don't lose the passion for the stories that you want to tell, because everybody's story is, is important. Everybody's story deserves to be heard and deserves to be seen because there is somebody out there who who wants to see themselves on screen. And maybe you could be the one to push that and be the first person to do something like that. Yeah. And what you're saying, it, it's so true about just as far as like, I feel like nowadays, with, especially with all the different streaming sites that we have, uh, just so many more opportunities where obviously, you know, years ago where we didn't have streaming and it was all just like theatrical or sometimes there was like direct to video like projects, but there's definitely a lot more opportunities. So even if you don't get like that initial, like some maybe a project you're really hoping to get, maybe there's like a couple other projects or opportunities that might open up for you or like you said just going into different avenues in the field too because there's so many different positions within the film industry absolutely and i think something um that always resonated with me that it was advice that i got in the in the industry converse coming in was don't worry about winning the project just win the room make sure you go in that room or, or you go in that zoom audition that you got or you're in that you're on that uh, self-tape that you're doing and make sure you win over that casting director and make a fan because if you're not right for this project, that's fine. But that casting director is not only casting one project, they're casting so many others. And in the back of their head, you know, even two years down the line, you could, they could be like, you know what? I remember this kid I saw and let's bring her in for this or let's bring him in for this. And you could have not auditioned for that person for years, but you won them over that one time and they will bring you in because they like you, you know, you're reliable, you're consistent, things like that. Exactly. Making a, a good fir uh, first impression for sure. Mm -hmm. So you play Tuklo in the, the Marvel series Echo, uh, Echo uh, which is streaming on <laughs> Disney Plus now. What was your audition process like? Just because I'm always curious, especially when it comes to projects, you know, involving Marvel, they're so secretive and, and, and all that stuff. So what was the audition process like? Uh, yeah, it was very secretive. I, uh, you know, you sometimes you can't even go through your own team. And I was just told, you know, it's a Disney show. 
And I thought, you know, I grew up on Disney. So I thought like oh, high school musical, like Wizards of Waverly Place. Like, is that what we're, is that what cool kind of show? And then I got the sides and I thought, this is, uh, this is nothing Disney that I would ever like, this is not the Disney that I know. And, you know, studios evolve. And so I was like, okay, maybe, you know, we'll see what it is. Um, and I auditioned and, you know, I auditioned for a couple of different roles in the show. And then um, I didn't actually know it was Marvel until I booked the job, you know, months after we had started this whole process. And finally I got a call while I was working at a restaurant and they said, Hey, you booked it. And I was like, Oh, that's amazing. Like what, what is it? Like, what have I been doing this whole time? What's so secretive? And they were like, it's Marvel. And I freaked out. I just like started crying immediately. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, too. And what was, I'm curious, like, what was your relationship with the Marvel Cinematic Universe coming into this? Like, were were you a fan? Had you watched any of the other projects? Or is it just something that you were aware of, but you didn't necessarily see some of the previous stuff? Oh, no. I mean, I have I have a younger brother and, you know, my family and I watch Marvel um, all the time. And my one of my best friends, actually, in uh, we've known each other since we were very young. Uh, we went to college together and, and we were roommates. She actually has like she's a big Marvel fan. She's got the book with all of the universe timeline. She has sat down and watched everything in timeline order. She tried to make me do it once. And I was like, that's that's too many days. <laughs> a lot of but, dedication. Uh, but yeah, so I, of course, I knew about Marvel and um, I love Thor and I love, you know, I love a lot of stuff. I watched uh, Hawkeye before this and because uh, I think Jeremy Renner is an amazing actor. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, and good kind of prep work where even though Echo does stand on its own, if you watched Hawkeye, it definitely helps going into the series yeah. where you have. I mean, character. I like that episode one uh, definitely gave a, a, the backstory to people who hadn't watched Hawkeye or hadn't watched anything else. But um, Echo definitely is a standalone show. You can watch just our show and you'll know everything you need to know about what what's going on. Exactly. Which is, is really nice, too, because, I mean, like you said, at this point, we're like, what? I forget Tom. I had like 30 plus movies in several yeah. TV series in. So it's <laughs> you don't want to you, you look at that coming coming from the outside and you're like, that's a lot of homework to, to catch up. That's to a long to time this. to watch one show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. Can you talk about, you know, just being on set for that very first day and then stepping into, you know, your character's costume, what that kind of just felt like entering that world for the first time? Um, it was very surreal, kind of like an out of body experience. I I actually got off the plane um, in it, where we were filming in Georgia, I got off a plane and immediately went to set to go uh, get our costumes done because we were kind of on a quick timeline. And um I I put it on and I thought, what's going on? Because at that time, I still hadn't read, you know, you don't really get your whole episodes and your whole script or anything like that. You're going to get the pieces of your scenes that you need. Yeah. Um. So I when I put everything on, I was like, what's going on? I'm still so confused. Um. But I, I got to put on the dress for the first time. We fit everything. And I was like, OK. And then I put on my light horseman outfit. And that is when I felt I felt so strong in that outfit, the jacket. Um. Everything was very hot. It was very warm. Oh, I imagine. <laughs> um, but but getting on set the first day and kind of not knowing what people were going to treat me like and, and, you know, how people were going to react to to me is, you know, I, I was just a small fish. You know, that's all I am. Um, and to get on set and have everybody be so open and like wel welcoming um, to to be super excited and for them to know my name. And I was just, I was even shocked that people knew who I was and, and they were like, Hey, Danny, and good morning, Danny. And everyone was just so amazing. Our stunt coordinator immediately took me and um, I throw the rabbit stick. You see me throw the rabbit stick a couple of times. Yep. Uh, that was the first thing I did while I was in my dress. He was like, we're going to pull you over here. And have you ever thrown one of these before? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> like where in my daily life am I using a <laughs> rabbit stick? So um, Keith was our stunt coordinator and he, he really got me. He was the first person who kind of went like, okay, we're good. No nerves, no anything. This is, this is what you do. And I was like, yeah, this is what I do. You're right. You're so right. This is exactly what I do. That, yeah. And that must be nice too. Cause I mean, like you said, coming into a, into a project, you know, something done by Marvel, it, it, I feel like it's kind of natural just to feel a little nervous. Cause you're like, wow, I'm on this, you know, this big production, this big set. Uh, so it's really nice that everyone was just so, you know, welcoming to you, you know, coming on to the project. Yeah, I, I felt really, 
I felt really loved on that set. I did. I, I felt like everybody truly loved what they did and and really wanted to make this project as amazing as it could be. And so we all worked together pretty well. What were your when when you did actually get to read, uh, you know, some of the scripts, like for your, the scenes with your character? What were your initial thoughts of her when you first kind of got those, you know, those breakdowns? She's so cool. Like, she's so cool. Like, just I I, there's <laughs> no other. Yeah. Like, there's nothing else I can say. She's so cool and so strong. And I think that's something that, you know, maybe women are sometimes told, you know, you know, you need to be this and you need to be that and don't be so strong and don't be so aggressive or whatever. And, and it's like, wow, no, she stood, you know, she's, she stood up for what she believed in and she followed her heart in whatever way she decided that was going to go. And I mean, it worked out great because she saved her dad. (laughs) Exactly. And, and like we were talking about, you know, beforehand, before we jumped on, just saying that, it's pretty crazy when you're you're watching a series, you know, you have the main character, Echo, and but you you get to episode, I believe it was uh, episode three uh, was like mm-hmm. your episode. And, um, you know, you just see this character and you're just instantly mesmerized and want to learn more about that particular character. Like I said, I would love to see like almost like a spinoff series just focusing on your character because I was so captivated about you know just her presence but also learning more like about the lore and everything like that so and and you have to really knock it out of the park to to do that with not being something where it's like you know you're in like every single episode of the series yeah fingers crossed i mean from your <laughs> lips out to marvel's ears <laughs> you're like yeah, yeah let's, I, go, let's go ahead and do it yeah i it was it was a really fun there were really fun shoes to step into for sure and i think that's always our job as an actor is to mirror the human experience and And somebody out there at a certain time in this entire, you know, lifetime of ours, uh, you know, went through that and goes through that in in whatever way they do. You know, it doesn't always have to be the time that the show like that piece of the show was set in. But women go through that all the time. And there's a line in there that uh, men are life takers and women are life givers. And it's like we are so much more than that. And and for Marvel to even push for that and this to be like, you know. Uh, a show about the matriarchy of her family as opposed to the patriarchy of the family. Yeah, no, the, this show, I, I I just didn't realize, I was interested, obviously, seeing the trailers, like, you know, I was like, yep, definitely going to be checking this out. But once we actually got into the series, it was just so much more than I guess I was even expecting it to, to be. And just, you know, I, I myself, I didn't really know a whole lot about like the, the Choctaw people. And afterwards, I um, I found out that there's actually a website that they put up uh, for the collaboration between the, the Choctaw Nation and uh, Marvel. And so I was reading mm-hmm. through some of that stuff. And so I was obviously loved, you know, loved Echo, Echo but just I wanted to even learn more about, you know, uh, the, the lore and all the stories, you know, they, that these people had to, to tell. I thought that was really fascinating. Yeah, I think it's so important for people to see other cultures on screen, because just like you, maybe there's something they see like, oh, wow, it's really fascinating. And let me learn more about those people in that tribe or that clan and, and kind of dive deeper. And then that's how you realize that like, oh, wow, things are going on outside of like, what, whatever we see in the news all the time. And, and I think there's that's collaboration, not only with, you know, um, with Echo and, and the way we do things in this entertainment industry, but also then people like you could find a soft spot in your heart for something that's going on in Choctaw Nation and, and how you can help with that. And that's, you know, that's the kind of networking and that we need, we need to be able to see other people's cultures and traumas and things like that. You know, even the, the beautiful, oh my gosh, the scene where, you know, we're at the powwow and it's silent because you're in Maya's head. And yep. just to see the beauty of the regalia that the Choctaw people are wearing, it's stunning. And, you know, we would never, I don't think you'd ever get that on such a big screen unless some, you know, major person out there was pushing for it and Marvel was the one to do that. Yeah, it was so cool that, you know, the the, the collaboration that they they did, you know, with the, the Choctaw people. And, and like I said, I, I, I'm still... I feel like I've obviously only like scratched the surface surface, but it's something that I've been, you know, looking into and gathering like more information just because it's something that I was I was really interested in. Hey, we only get to see a glimpse of, of Tukwila's life when we we first, you know, see her like in that episode. Did you come up with any additional like backstory, whether it's 
even like before we meet the character or even maybe what her life looked like, you know, after, you know, what we see in the show? Um, I definitely did a lot of work uh, on before we see to glow and, and what her life is like. Why is, um, why is her dad such a big presence in her life? Where is her mother? You know, where, does she have siblings? Um, and I, I kind of decided uh, along with our director, Kat, we kind of went back and forth, but um, yeah, we kind of decided that, you know, my mother unfortunately was killed um, when I was young. And so I only grew up with around my dad and the light horsemen and, you know, I was the girl and they were the men and they would protect me. And, but that's all I saw growing up, growing up. And, you know, sometimes as a kid, when you mirror the experience that you see growing up and that's kind of who you step into and the shoes you, you fulfill. And so I only knew light horseman duties, you know, I only knew of that kind of lifestyle. So yep. it to, uh, on two clothes end in my mind, it was, oh, I would absolutely do this. And this is maybe what my dad has even been preparing me for my whole life is to step into these shoes. And so I think that's why Tuklo feels so comfortable going like, hey, I'm ready to join you. This is it, like, it's my time. And for my dad to go, what? This is not like that. It's not at all what we were going for is that's why I think it's so heartbreaking for her is because she grew up going, oh, this is what this is what he's preparing me for. And this is all I know. So to not have a life in that what do I do? Yeah, that's all, that's all she knows, like up to this point. So I'm always curious because I know sometimes actors will do that. They'll, they'll, you know, go into like a back story story, but sometimes they don't, they just kind of come in, you know, with what they have there and just, you know, go with that. Um, this, this series, we got to return home with Maya and got to learn about, you know, her, her family. What did you learn about yourself just working on this project? Um, I think it's, I think I probably relearned some stuff about myself that maybe I had forgotten, you know, living in LA and, and working in this industry, how, how strong I, I can really be. And, and there's a line that I say, um, or there's a line that, you know, comes on screen um, that says, you know, they will see me for who I am, not who they want me to be. Um, and I think that's, so that's a lesson that I had to relearn myself, because I think, in this industry and you know coming from a small town in texas you know people want you to be a certain thing and your culture sometimes pushes you to be a certain thing and and then you have to remind yourself like no like you should see me as who i am and who i've always been and and parts of me were raised to be certain things and you know i can't push those things away you know i have to my, my parents raised me to be a dreamer my parents always told me you can be anything you want and don't forget that anything you can choose anything and we will love you and we'll be proud of you um and then of course you get to a certain age where they're like well make sure you have a steady job and make sure you got security and you're <laughs> like but this is what i want to do you know you told me anything so this is it that's um, what i'm doing <laughs> yeah so have so so getting to kind of relearn that about myself of going you are strong and you can stand in who you are and and they're going to see you for who you are not who you know not all the pressures that this world is putting on you to be something different you have to be true to who you are and that's going to get you where you want to go. And and that's, yeah, a lot of people I think tend to want to just, and sometimes I don't think, I don't know if they even do it on purpose, but they just put people in, you know, certain boxes that are like, Oh, this is what I, I think this person's like, you know, the first time I, that I met them. And then, you know, you learn a little bit more about that person. You're like, wow, that's not exactly actually at all what I thought they were like. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, you know, it's a very important lesson. It's something to, like you said, um, you know, just remember as you're kind of going on in, in any career, you know, not even like acting, but just life, life in general. Absolutely. And don't believe everything you see on the internet, you know, <laughs> exactly. people put their highlight reels on the internet. They don't, they're not putting the bad stuff. So yeah. stay true to yourself. In the season finale, uh, we get this really great moment where, you know, Maya, she's fighting this iconic villain in Kingpin and, you know, you get to see all the ancestors there. And I, I just thought it was a really powerful moment where you see all these different generations of women working together. So can you just talk a little bit about working on that scene and kind of what it meant to be involved, you know, in that, in that particular moment? I thought it was one of the most important scenes in the entire series um, to, to know not only, I mean, obviously not only in indigenous cultures, but in cultures all around the world, we talk about how our past loved ones are always with us. You know, some people refer to them as guardian angels, um, protectors, but, but, you know, sometimes maybe in your head, you can see them all. Um, but it's hard to kind of picture that and to be able to see that visually 
I think was so important for people to to remember and for maybe for Maya to see, you know, in herself that, oh, wait a second, all these women are around me. They are the echo, the generations are echoing all around me. And I am and not only, you know, a, their lineage, but I am their legacy. I am, I am them. I have to carry them with me moving forward. Um, it was, it's so important. And to, and then to be on set with all the other girls and to see them and be like, Hey, oh my gosh, like we're here together. We're not just fighting in our separate episodes where we're all together. It was so lovely to be, um, to be around people of the same, you know, the same kind of character and, and our job, our role is as protectors. Yeah, no, I thought that was just such a great way to to wrap up the series. And I imagine, like you said, you know, just being together with all of them, it must have been so much fun just having all you guys on set, you know, shooting that, you know, particular scene in that episode. Um, and, and I like how they really incorporated that with her name uh, for the series. They kind of gave that. And I don't know if that's something because I myself, I'm not as familiar with her when it comes to the comics. So I don't know if that's something, guys, if, if that is something in the comics, then my bad. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it was really cool coming into this, not knowing as much about the character and giving that that kind of like meaning behind her name. I thought that was really neat. Yeah, I, it's it's just a really I think it's a really beneficial character to have in this in this not only universe of Marvel, but in the, in the world to show you know, she can do it. She is so cool. And she's such a badass. Excuse my language. Um, and she, <laughs> you know, she, she really does fight. I mean, um, you know, Alakwa, our lead um, shooting as Maya, you know, she really does fight for what she wants and, and to represent so many different communities, the deaf community, amputee and, um, and indigenous. Wow. Like, you know, to have all three in one and to show that people with disabilities are differently abled people, can do so much more than what this world even allows them to do and assumes that they can do. She's so cool. And, and yeah, she just, she's cool. <laughs> I, I can't imagine too, just, you know, coming into this series, like I was, you know, we got to see her in Hawkeye, but there must've been some nerves in there for her, for sure. You know, representing all those different groups of, of people and, you know, being on the screen. I, I mean, she, she killed it. She was amazing yeah. in the series, but I imagine it's like, I am a representation of, you know, these different, you know, uh, groups of people. And sometimes or this might be the first time, you know, different groups of those people seeing someone like that on the screen, like for the first time, uh, just so just to kind of like carry that. Uh, but yeah, she should be very proud with how, you know, everything, all of you guys, honestly, the way that the whole like series like turned out, it, it, it was amazing. It's one of my my favorite series that Disney Plus has done so far for for Marvel. I'm so glad. I'm so I'm so happy to hear you say that. I think it like I said, she's just a really important character to have in this in this world. And um, yeah, I'm so I'm super thankful to even be a part of it and even, you know, have a little piece of it, you know, a little piece of myself in the MCU for, <laughs> yeah. for I guess the rest of the time. Who knows? <laughs> and you never you never know what happens. Like, you know, we kind of talked about the spinoff, you know, potential of like a spinoff series, but even just like you know, popping up in, in other series, you know, Maya yeah. like coming back, you know, into other series or movies, you could, you know, pop up. Um, we we kind of talked a little bit about this, like, I guess, like already, but I wanted to ask you, what does it mean to be involved in a project like Echo, where cultural representation was uh, at the forefront of this series? I think it's, just super important to this industry, we see we need to see other communities stories. And we need to not see not just other communities, but like real authentic stories being told. And and we see that, you know, with Killers of the Flower Moon being nominated and, you know, so such a such an amazing, an amazing, um, you know, piece of history there. Uh, I think just being involved in something that is representing so many different communities. Um, you know, my brother is disabled and to see a character with disability kicking ass on screen is is something that the disabled community doesn't see very often either so to be a part of something that that really does represent authenticity and and represents so many people in such a good way in such a strong way um I, i'm so thankful and i think a lot of that lends to too which i i didn't know going into the series that the level of collaboration between marvel and the communities i didn't know that they are working so closely but i think even before the series was done and I read up on that afterwards, I think watching the series, you can you can tell there's that like that level of authenticity there. So you can see it's like 
it, it, like it makes sense. It doesn't feel like, you know, superficial or anything like that. So I, I think that's just really cool that Marvel wanted to work hand in hand, you know, with the, the Choctaw Nation and, and with uh, the ASL community like as well. So um, just to, to bring that all together on a, a project like that, it's uh, it's really nice to see a big studio like Marvel, you know, doing that like as well. Yeah, I think I think what who better than to get, you know, the general population into into stories like this, you know, Marvel took a risk, they stuck their neck out for for not only the Choctaw community, but, you know, the other two communities represented here. And wow, it I think it's paying off pretty. I think it's paying off pretty well. I think people are really enjoying the series. Um, yeah. The collaboration with Choctaw Nation, it was really cool. Uh, our first screening of the first two episodes were actually um, at the Choctaw Cultural Center in Oklahoma. And they had um, they had Maya's costume, uh, Loak, which is the one who plays with the stick ball. She's played yep. by Mo Morningstar Angeline. And then um, they had my costume up there as well. So that was that was really cool to see. <laughs> I was going to say, that must have been kind of surreal for you to have the costume of the character that you played up on display for everyone to, to see there. Very much so. It, I mean, even at our premiere, it was up there and I was like, oh my goodness, the first time I've seen my costume in so long because we shot in 2022 and yeah. um, I got to bring my parents and my boyfriend there to the red carpet. So for my parents to see it, they were just, I mean, they were so amazed and they were so proud. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it's, yeah, it sounds like it was a very you know special moment for, for all you guys. Well, Danny, just, just to wrap things up, is there anything else that you want to say about just working on the project in general or anything, you know, you want to say to the, to the fans, you know, who watch the series as well. Uh, just thank you. Gosh, thank you so much for being invested in Maya story and any other stories you connected with. I hope we made um, all of the communities that we represented. I hope we made you so proud and, um, and did justice to telling stories and showing your, your culture, you know, off to the people. I hope um, you continue to follow Maya's journey and I hope you continue um to watch the show and push the show to everybody. Um, and I hope we touched your hearts in some way. And is there, as far as like, uh, you know, just keeping up with your work going on in the future, Danny, is there anywhere that uh, fans could, you know, follow you as far as for like updates in the future? Uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram right now. Just my name, Danny McCallum. I'm on there hanging out, not doing much. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'll make yeah. sure then to, uh, to go ahead and put that in the, uh, the description of the video as well. So that way, people can give you a, a follow and like I said, stay up to date with all your work. Danny, I want to say thank you so much for, you know, again, for taking time out of your schedule for coming on here, you know, talking about the the series and your experience. It was, uh, it was so much fun talking to you and you're welcome back anytime in the future. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for even having me. I hope I get to come back and talk about more projects that I get to do. Hey, I'm Danny McCallum. I play Tuclo in Marvel's Echo and you're watching Pop Culture with Pat.